Yeah, I'd like to welcome someone to join us here. I'll show you a little video first, what made me think of inviting him. Um, I saw this video on the internet. Yeah, and... Yeah. <laughs> The, the gentleman there that just turned and walked past the fire is actually um, dating my sister for all just to, for, for full disclosure. But um, I thought, well, let's invite him. So well, let's welcome Dennis Nishi to here. Um, um, Dennis is actually an Emmy Award winning um, journalist. He's a multimedia journalist, writes for the Wall Street Journal, and also KCET, which is who you were out uh, filming these fires with. You were actually in the heart of it. What was that like? Uh, it was uh, pretty terrifying, <laughs> as you would expect, because we're surrounded by fire. And everywhere we went, uh, sh um, sparks were showering down on us. Yeah. Now, I'll start the video that you provided here and go ahead and, talk and tell us a little bit about it as we're, we're looking at it here. See, so this is the video we just saw. In higher resolution. Yeah. This was actually shot by my executive producer's uh, iPhone. Where did you shoot that? Where was it shot? This was on PCH. And uh, this is actually what I was seeing. Guys, go, power lines, go! And of course, uh, uh, we drove a little ways off and uh, shot it from outside the window. But it kept getting bigger and bigger, so we drove off after this. Mm. This is, uh, uh, I'm on the other side of PCH by the water. We're going into uh, backyards of uh, people's homes in, in different areas of Malibu. And, uh, it was actually pretty uh, uh, heart-wrenching to kind of see people's homes and their personal possessions and these little things that you don't normally see in newscasts uh, on fire. This is Pepperdine University. They actually escaped a, a lot of the fire. Uh. The, many of the students were actually in the on the campus when the fire throughout the fire. Um, they kind of secreted them in the library. Oh my gosh! This was a, a restaurant, a spa, and a houses around uh, in uh, Point Two. It was interesting how uh, uh, the, the fire department were, were really spread thin and they were coming from all over the country and uh, these are actually not firemen, they're photographers. Yeah, you were saying that people were giving them a hard time for taking selfies in front of somebody's house that's putting thinking they were firemen, but they were just <laughs> photographers. Yeah, it kind of went all over the internet to try to correct people in case they thought firemen were taking selfies in front of somebody's home that was burning. Yeah, which but, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be good. Now you went back the next day to take a look at the devastation, which must have been even almost more heartbreaking to see the, the aftermath. While you're in it, it's just danger and you're escaping, but you have a little video to show on that too. Yeah, a lot of, uh, most, most of the areas were pretty empty, but some people had stayed behind and they were kind of uh, uh, just kind of going through the rubble, so that's, yeah. you know, hard to watch. Yeah, but it wasn't all bad, and you'll t talk about that while we look at this here as well. Right. That's a yearbook that I found uh, on a hillside. It's interesting that the power was on in some places, which made it actually more dangerous for us. Yeah. That's the last call box in California. Now this is our uh, actually residents in Malibu who stayed behind, and they were doing collections and distributions through the harbor <coughs> of food and water. Yeah, this is actually a team of uh, of lifeguards that were going from uh, house to house with a radio network, and they were putting out fire in people people's backyards. We actually had to jump uh, out of the jump over walls to follow them. Afterwards, they would uh, clap each other in the back and then have beers out in the park, you know, out in the street. <laughs> And they were just a group of friends that... They were actually uh, LA County lifeguards yeah. and they're all friends and they had a huge network of surfers all over Malibu who were uh, on radio and then whenever they would see smoke, they'd call them in and they'd jump in pickup trucks with their surfboards and drive out to uh, the different areas. Yeah. Now, you recently went to a fire that was at the, or an aftermath of the fire that was in the Sierras with a drone and got a little footage there. Um, a lot of people don't know that Yosemite was burning. Yeah, in Mariposa, which is a town outside of, of uh, Yosemite, uh, the whole area, mountain 
mountainsides were just totally denuded. And uh, you can see that uh, it was just nothing but uh, um, just trunks, burnt trunks. Yeah, so this is after the recent snowfall here. So you're seeing, you know, landscape that can change with mudslides and all the rest when that melts. It's, you know, but disastrous, these fires in California. But these are not, uh, I mean, this is not uh, an unusual circumstance. It happens semi-regularly, so it's not a, a real bad, you know, the things grow back. In fact, the fire creates a growth spurt of life, so. Right. But it is, when you see it, it, it does look uh, pretty uh, disheartening. Well, it's not, it's not as hard to put up with as the, the loss of life and property with the local fires, but as you can see, life finds a way. Yes. It really does. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, how did you get involved with doing these fires? Just Well, we're working on a, a story uh, at SoCal Connected, which is a show on KCET about uh, how wildfires are becoming a year-round event, so it's not a seasonal thing anymore. And uh, we're looking at all the different reasons for this, uh, including construction, uh, as well as uh, you know uh, just drought conditions. So there's a lot of different factors that kind of uh, uh, not just forest management that uh, influence the the reasons. Uh, question. Did you ever get any sparks landing on you? I mean, did you get any burns? Those things were flying through the air. I mean, yeah. In fact, I was lying on the ground in front of these embers that were flying at us. But we had uh, turnout gear, some uh, fireproof uh, coats and uh, and boots and, and things. So. Uh, but they were still, uh, it was pretty frightening to see things. I mean, yes. we would just be walking uh, along um, the, the road and there would be uh, power lines all over the place and you never know when those are going to, so I actually have insulated boots now in case I ever have to do that again, that, yeah. that linemen wear. Uh, but uh, um, it's, a, it's a really fair, scary place to be behind police lines in Malibu when it's all dark yeah. and you can't see anything and all of a sudden fires uh, come up. Uh, that, Fire uh, spout, uh, which uh, uh, the new other media called it a fire NATO, is uh, it was it was actually just a little tiny fire on the top of a hill, and it just you know the wind picked up, and all of a sudden it was coming right at us, and it was blowing things, and um, it was uh, circling all. I mean, we basically uh, uh, um, you know got out of there pretty quick, and and uh, it actually died down as quickly as it as it started. But that's how quickly things happen, you know, in a in a fire. <laughs> Uh, which is why I never recommend going, you know, behind a police line right. to look at a fire. Yeah. Well, thank um, you. I understand that there was some sort of an electrical glitch up in Paradise. Is that for real? I mean, that's what that is. Read. In fact, there are lawsuits already in place uh, of uh, residents who are suing um, not only uh, PG&E but also Southern California Edison in the, in for the woods, you know the Southern Fire. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the Northern Fire, they say, were hooks that hold the lines were you know uh, were causing the problems. And in the in the Southern Fire, it was uh, um, I think the supports, the metal supports, were uh, near a breaker that caused it. Possibly, that's uh, that's what they're th they're researching right now. They don't know uh, d definitively yet. Okay. Shouldn't you have had a mask? How much cigarettes did you breathe in? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I've never smoked, and I probably had gone through my whole you know uh, eight lives. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely not very smart. I did. We did have masks and glasses, but I was looking through the camera at this massive event thinking, wow, this looks amazing. I have to see it so I can focus. And then, of course, it just became this big thing and, and I walked away, you know, fairly, uh, you know, uh, patiently. Yeah. How about the mudslides now? I mean, uh, now that all those burn areas are going to turn to mudslides with the rain. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty terrible. And that's a, a whole other disaster um, that's already, I think, taken a life. So it's, a, it's definitely a, a problem, that, and especially with the rains that followed, which helped uh, control the fires, but has also uh, yeah. caused the slides. Well, thank you, Dennis, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Yeah.